you know, I, I thought it might be interesting to sort of maybe take 10 minutes just to kind of frame digital acceleration within our broader uh, Harris data to begin with, because I think there's two other major components that are going to drive further uh, digital acceleration, which is clearly social and economic acceleration. So a function of that are a few different things that we're tracking. Uh, one of the first things that we are tracking is this um, sort of scary chart, we call it our fear chart, which is a weekly look at American anxiety. And um, you can see sort of in the beginning of March, 54% thought the national fear was irrational. Today, 71% now uh, obviously understand COVID's devastating impacts uh, on our public health, on our, the lives of our fellow Americans and on the economy. And so 71% believe that's now sensible. But look at what happens with sort of the ways that fear and anxiety have sort of replaced each other, almost a little bit like, like waves crashing on a shore. There was first a fear of a global recession. There was fear of ventilator shortages. There were three subsequent major fears of new waves of coronavirus, which uh, became to be self-evident, and a lot of different things. The, the main headline I want to say, before, without getting into too much detail, is that we're seeing for the first time in two weeks a diminishment of fear in society, uh, with some notable exceptions uh, in some places. One is sort of the disapproval of the vaccine rollout uh, ticked up ever so slightly. We think that was a function last week because of the weather across the United States, but we're starting to see some good news on this front. Um, the major thing that we're tracking is sort of this consumer comfort index. And uh, this is something we've been, again, tracking back to March of, of 2020. We just ask Americans, would you feel comfortable doing this? And you can still see at that orange bar on the bottom, this is the challenge to the economy, right? And also the sort of the boon to a lot of the digital acceleration we've already seen, which is that uh, people are supplanting traditional physical activities with, with digital and virtual, clearly. But look at a couple of these things, you know, among Americans that are still not comfortable, half of over Americans are still not comfortable traveling on a plane at 52%, uh, taking public transportation at 54%, or attending a large concert or sporting event at 58%. Now we imagine that the more that vaccine rates rise, the, the more that neutral bar will start to emerge and, and people will become more comfortable sort of venturing out. But I think it's really important to understand the economic impacts here really briefly. There's really a tale of sort of two COVID economies. For most people, they haven't felt like they've been affected. 50% of Americans, in fact, say, you know what, it's basically neither affected my, my finances one way or the other. And 17% uh, have said, uh, to actually have positive impact. And there's about a third of Americans that, that have really felt this negative uh, impact in, in a huge way. And so as a result, you know, we've asked lots of questions like how would you describe how you're handling the negative impact? Um, and so there's been a lot of emphasis on savings, on sort of more diligence around finance. Um, but this is really telling, I think, for sort of roughly a third to a half of Americans that have been impacted, you can see in the green their answers of very or somewhat severe to very personal and stressful financial situations, right? From having lost income, accumulating debt, missing a bill payment, um, skipping out on retirement savings, et cetera. So that's just a data point for us to think about as we're thinking about the recovery, which is sort of understanding that this is a very uneven recovery and we need to sort of you know cater our, our sort of consumer marketing and branding appeals accordingly. Um, really good news though, there is massive pent up demand for a roaring uh, back half of the year. We have been gathering and seeing this continue to almost um, build and gather and it like on the verge of exploding, but Americans really want their life back. And the longer this is drug on, the more people are getting anxious. So a lot of FOMO going on, a lot of desire to get back out there most notably us being social creatures, it's gathering with our friends and family, dining out, shopping in stores, going to church, you know, getting back into the things that, that we did, and a big, big push on spending on the right, particularly with regards to vacation and traveling. We're doing a lot of uh, different work in this sector and seeing a lot of really sort of back half planning on, on vacations, as well as other things that Americans have sort of denied themselves, like buying new clothes and cars and things like that. Uh, I want to hit this real quickly, really importantly, that 
We've been tracking the vaccine um, sort of acceptance ever since the first no notice that Moderna and Pfizer were bringing these out in, in sort of April of last year and the vaccine race was on. And at that time, 73% of Americans said that they would actually take the vaccine. Fast forward to the election season, the vaccine becomes a political football and we see that the rates went way down. There was only about 58% as of November 7th after the election that said that they were likely to take the vaccine. Lately, over the last couple of weeks, it's sort of gone back and forth. As of this past weekend, 68% of Americans say they're likely to get the vaccine, 32% not likely, but encouragingly, it's dropping among all major demos in terms of the resistors. The percentage of not likely are continued to sort of decline. But this is really important. I think we cannot kind of talk about um, people not getting the vaccine as anti-vaxxers. That's a real misnomer. There's a lot of legitimate questions that, that people have, including 55% of those who say that they're not likely to get a vaccine, saying they're worried about the side effects. And just notice, for example, the, the multicultural polls that really drive um, sort of a cultural context to resistance of this. Um, for example, you know, look at um, among Black Americans, they don't trust the government to make it safe. So with that context, you know, we are seeing this uh, as not only a public health challenge, it's actually a social challenge of really earning the trust among all Americans across our communities. When you look at data like this, which I won't get into all the detail, but you can see that Black Americans have mistrust systemic mistrust of the healthcare system, another aspect of the systemic racism that, that Americans, Black Americans have faced that result in sort of the barriers to accepting um, the vaccine. Um, what's interesting though, is that business itself, as we come back out of, out of COVID, is in a really great position. Business has risen in esteem, whereas many institutions have not, uh, notably social media, the Congress, the president, you can see all these sort of pinnacles of our democracy are sort of all under assault right now, uh, particularly given the events of January 6th. Um, but there is also a move afoot to sort of regulate uh, social media. Seven out of 10 Americans agree with that. So now let's get into the data real quickly and, and look at digital transformation itself. The main thing that kind of comes out of COVID, what we see is a what we call a CVPTSD, right? We may be possibly dropping our masks in the second half of this year, possibly not, according to Dr. Fauci, but regardless, there are psychic baggage that comes with the loss of 500,000 lives and all the dislocation. So we sort of see three main trends that are gonna continue uh, into next year as Americans um, sort of dig their way out of this. And this includes sort of the no contact lifestyle. This has become very, very uh, simple to Americans. They see it as safe. Um, they're very satisfied with online shopping. You know, 77% is a really robust number. Um, and they're also using far more different tools like customer chatbots. Uh, they're very interested in using contactless uh, commerce and six out of 10 have found it very easy to do so. Second bucket, space is a luxury good. This is physical, but it's also virtual that, you know, people really want room. Uh, to navigate, and that's going to have an impact on the retail when you go back into physical environments, uh, which we'll talk about. And then it's really important to think about safety as a customer journey, and you can see that uh, really in, in the evidence of our shoppers. Um, not to say that consumers don't miss the experience of shopping. There is a, a lot of what's to miss about it, but I think what's important on the right-hand side is what they've done to supplant that, right? There's far more acceleration of behaviors like relying on online reviews or chatbots or video reviews. All those things have become sort of ways in which um, people have sort of cleverly sort of supplanted and done their own MacGyver uh, to sort of, you know, replicate the experience of, of shopping physically. And, you know, they give the industry high marks for doing their best at digitally adapting to consumer needs. You know, we see high numbers in the high 70s into the 60s across a range of different sectors when asked how good or poor of a job have these industries done in digitally adapting their products and services. So again, a, a far degree of understanding that business has done a pretty good job of adapting. A um, couple of other real brief things for uh, I hand it back to you, Josh and, and Drew. Uh, one is just the fact that, you know, various sectors accelerated very quickly and rapidly over need. Telehealth was a great example of that. 
And we're seeing most Americans very comfortable with telehealth and they intend to continue to use it, especially younger uh, folks in cities and, and BIPOC, which is really encouraging as a sort of inclusive technology advancement uh, for, the, for the good of all of us. And it could potentially replace primary care doctors for over one third of visits, according to the most recent Harris poll, a polling that we've done um, where we asked that very question and saw a high degree of interest, especially among uh, Gen Z and millennials and even Gen X at 50%. So uh, lastly, I'll leave you with a little bit of data we shared with Bloomberg this week. Um, speaking of all things digital, but we asked how legitimate do you think cryptocurrencies are such as Bitcoin as a form of payment? I realize it's down a little bit this week significantly, but you know, as of last week, it was seen uh, ever more so as a legitimate form of payment, 57%. Um, but yet at the same time, Americans don't know what it is. They can't really articulate what it is. So we refer to it less as cryptocurrencies and, and more as cryptic currencies. And I think that's a bit of a metaphor maybe before your conversations through the rest of the conference, which is sort of really understanding how do we continue to create digital acceleration and find ways to make these sort of advents in technology a part of people's sort of natural ways in which they interact so that they really understand what they're doing. And here's my last slide, you know, post COVID consumers really see a hybrid of digital and in-person services across categories that extends to shopping where they're seeing sort of, you know, when asked the question, which of the following would you prefer to do? The by and large shopping is going to be hybrid at almost 70%. The gym at 62%. More hybrid is sort of cutting into that as, as our virtual workouts, almost uh, 20%. School, the same sort of situation uh, where there's gonna be a blended mix and then clearly in healthcare. So sort of blended is the way to go as we sort of think of the future. That's a quick look at, uh, at what we're doing and um, I'll turn it back over to you guys. Great. Hey, John, quick quick question. The old analyst in me has a million questions, but just briefly, because I want to get to Ahmed Shah from 1-800-Flowers, and this is a great setup for, for my conversation with Ahmed. Um, in terms of sort of the first half of your presentation and feelings about vaccine and behavior and the pandemic, I'm wondering if there's been a shift for what is influencing people in regards to whether about, is it news, is it friends and family, and is news from social media, from tradi traditional media sources, as we might call them, but I'm just curious, what is moving the needle in those sort of bigger feelings about the pandemic and whether I should wear a mask, vaccinations, should I travel? And any thoughts on what's influencing people now? And is it different than in the past? Sure, Drew. Originally, it was news and social media that actually contributed to the confusion and a lot of the polarization based on how it, the vaccine became politicized, especially during the fall. But yeah. we just found in our recent polling, 66% of Americans said that they're more likely to take the vaccine if they see other people they know in their community. Right. So that's the really important thing is focusing on parishes, churches, communities, more of that model behavior. So as more vaccine rates rise, we anticipate that there will be a less of a resistance to getting the vaccine. That's great. Well, look, I mean, again, I have a million more questions, but um, next time uh, we have a, another conference, we'll definitely have you guys back to kick it off. And thanks so much for, for joining us and, and for offering these insights. Really appreciate it. Thank you.